Hey guys, we're back. This time we're going to be taking a look at Ket 2.0 and this is the more updated, scaled down version of the monstrous original Ket. And they've updated the theme a little bit, scaled things down a little bit, and modernized the whole thing a little bit more. They did do a couple rules changes to the gameplay, but more or less it's the same game just updated for a better experience. Anyway, we're going to open her up and get in and take a look. So it shares a box type with its bigger brother there, where you open it from the side here. And right on top, we have a flyer that came with it for the Ket 2.0 computer game. It's available on Steam. And it's basically just a digital version of the board game. I think they have a single player mode, which is kind of neat. Next we have what could be considered the rule book. There isn't much here. Um, again, there's another ad for the app for Cat 2.0. This is the expansion that had the Eye of Horus. They made that for this as well as the original game. You have our look at the pieces. So right off the bat, you can see the Pharaoh's gotten an update to its look. The uh, Dejed was replaced with a Scarab. The Obelisks have been replaced with the Anubis. Pyramids stayed the same. And the Sphinx is a new piece because they, uh, they house the lasers in this, which were part of the board in the original game. And the basic instructions of how to play. It's not a super complicated game. And then we have our setups on the back here. Same three setups that came with the original game. Slightly modified for the fact that the laser now takes up a space. Next we have our board. Take it out of here. And this is actually really thick uh, plastic that they use for this. It's quite weighty, but it's very solid. And you can see across the board there's different hieroglyphs i've seen versions of this where the uh these were painted i don't know if that's just something uh in certain versions or not but mine doesn't have it we got the um uh, board's upside down here technically you got the onks here and um up here for the silver player silver pieces can move on those the red ones cannot and then you have the Eye of Horus here, where the red player can move to, and the silver player cannot. The little mark here in the corner for where the uh, lasers go. As far as the pieces go, everything's pretty much laid out the same. This empty slot here is actually pretty convenient. If you do get the Eye of Horus pieces, they fit directly into that slot, so you have a place to put them. But there you have your pyramid pieces. And these mirrors are filthy. I really need to clean them. There's the new scarabs. They actually have a scarab on the top now. These are the Anubis pieces. This is your pharaoh piece. And then we have the little lasers in the sphinx. Uh, if you can see on camera, here yeah, you can see it. That's the laser you're going to be using. And if you're not familiar with Ket uh, and Ket 2.0 here, 
Uh, it's a game similar to chess with an added complexity and tactical level where you're bouncing these lasers off of the mirrors and trying to hit and eliminate your opponent's pieces, ideally taking out their pharaoh. So let me get the game set up and then we'll talk a little more about it. So there we have a look at the board set up in the classic format. This is how they recommend for beginners. It's basically just the, the basic standard format. And there's tons of different ways to lay out. There's three in the book. There's a bunch you can download that have come out. And there's some that have been out since this game was released. Even new variants. But for the most part, this is the, the standard starting configuration. And... The players are going to take turns moving any one of their pieces. So any piece that you have can move in any direction one space. So you have eight spaces around you, including the diagonals. Or you can take your turn and rotate a piece 90 degrees. After each player moves, you're going to push the button on your um, Sphinx to fire the laser, which you, of course, can't see in here. But if I put my hand here... You can see it hitting my hand. It's going from here, reflecting off this mirror, this mirror, this mirror, and this mirror. And uh, it functions exactly the same as the original game. The couple new things that are in this version that are different, though, is that now your lasers, one of the mo moves you can make is to rotate your laser 90 degrees. And now your laser is shooting down this rank here instead of up this rank so you could move a piece here fire and now you can see i'm hitting this piece here you just have to keep in mind that your own pieces can be struck by your own laser but in this case if that were my move i would move then you fire your laser at the end this piece would get removed and your opponent goes and you take turns so after every time you move a piece you're going to fire your laser, and wherever it goes, that's uh, what's going to take. So in this case here, we fire, and you can see here we're going off this, off this, off this, and we're hitting the back side of this. So this one was going to get removed. And the gameplay continues on like that. Um, other changes in this version are the Anubis pieces. And... In the original game, you had these obelisks, and they could stack two on top of each other, and when it got hit, you take the top one off, and uh, they were replaced in this version with the Anubis model. And the Anubis model, if it gets hit from the front, ignores the hit. Basically, they're invulnerable from the front, but if you hit them from the sides or the rear, they're destroyed like any other piece. So that was kind of an interesting change for this version of the game. Other than those two, I think everything is the same. They changed the name of the Jed piece to Scarabs. I'm not sure why, what, what the reasoning was on that. And then, of course, the entire game was scaled down considerably to give you some idea of that. To give an idea how much it was scaled down, there's my Ket 1.0 board. And there's the Ket 2.0 board. We put it down in the corner here you know we've taken off almost an entire row and a half here and an entire row on that side so considerably smaller and the same goes for the pieces you scale down from this to this see the base differences but other than that the majority of the game remains the same. I definitely like the 2.0 version of the game over the original uh, for and nothing less the portability. Being a, a smaller game, it's easier to take to a game night at a store and things like that. The added strategy of the rotating lasers adds a whole new aspect to the game that wasn't in the original, as well as the um, Anubis pieces being immune from the front. That's kind of an interesting new twist. Uh, the other thing I didn't talk about was the other type of move. I mentioned you can move all your pieces in any direction, one space. 
uh, mentioned about the rotating the pieces. I forgot to mention the scarabs have an interesting ability where on top of the normal movement, um, in place of the normal movement, I should say, they can opt to switch places. So you could swap these two like this. They keep their original positioning and rotationing. They just switch places. And they can, the scarabs can switch places with any of the pyramids or the Anubis pieces, but not um, other scarabs or the pharaoh. So that's an interesting aspect too. Adds a lot to the strategy. I know most of this is repeating myself if you watch the original cat video. So you're going to hear a lot of the same things in this. Because in essence, at its core, it is the same game. Well, like I said though, the rotating of the lasers adds a new strategy to it. As well as the Anubis species being invulnerable. It's like this. Pretty much shields you from that straight across attack. Because these cannot take damage from the front. But if it hits you in the side, it will be destroyed. Overall though, I got no complaints about this other than these new lasers being smaller. They have watch batteries in here and you have to do the screw here to pop that bottom off to replace those batteries. Where the original game had double A's or triple A's, I mean, that went underneath the board because the lasers were built into the board itself. Triple A's didn't last nearly as long, but they could be easily bought and replaced anywhere. These watch batteries supposedly will last longer, and this set I've had for a while, and the lasers are still going strong. Um, but when you do need to replace them, they're going to be a little bit more expensive for you, so keep that in mind. At the same time, I've got video game cartridges from 25, 30 years ago that had watch batteries in them that still work. The batteries are still going, so it's all in how much you use them, I suppose, but just something to keep in mind. Do you think the... Uh, colors in this the red especially is a much more um it doesn't catch it too well on camera but it's much more translucent where these are more opaque and uh, it makes them light up considerably brighter when they are hit by the laser so if we put this here this here yeah you can still see that on camera it does suffer from the same issue that the original game had as no matter what. These seem to fit in very nice and there's not a lot of wiggle room or rotation. But the mirrors themselves are not perfectly aligned. So that the more mirrors you bounce off of, like here we're going this one to 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 here. And you can see when it hits, it's off-centered. It's not hitting straight in the center. The more mirrors you have bouncing off of in that respect... Uh, eventually it kind of shoots the uh, laser off center and sometimes you have to trace the path manually to figure out where it goes not a huge ordeal and it only happens after multiples like six or seven mirrors so it's not a huge thing but it is something to keep in mind the other minor drawback to this game over the original is the original's board had a raised lip all the way along the edge Oh, let's see if I can get this on camera. So you see there, when I shoot the laser and it hits nothing all the way across, it hits this border, and you can see when it goes off the board. When you do that with this one, obviously here it's going to go off those and off the board. There's nothing to see unless you put something there for it to reflect off of. Minor gripe, not anything game-breaking, but it is another thing to keep in mind, a difference between the original and the new version. Definitely, though, I think I prefer the newer version as it just looks nicer. I think the Anubis pieces over the monoliths or over the obelisks are a nice change. The added detail of the scarabs on top of these just makes it look nicer on the table and it, it uh, draws more attention. Also, has the added strategy aspects, like I mentioned, of the rotating lasers and the invulnerable Anubis pieces. And it just adds a little bit more of a strategy element to an already tactical strategy game. And I really enjoy it. In the end, either game is good. They're, they're both equally fun and playable. This one has a couple advantages over the original. Technically, the original, you have two extra pieces at your disposal. 
because the obelisk pieces actually stack so you could separate them and you have two different blockers so it gave you some more uh, depth there where you could build a nice defense with four of them but those were taken out in one hit these you can use as a blocker as well and they can't be destroyed from the front there so it's uh it's a trade-off on that overall though both games are solid and either one will suit you and you'll have fun playing it if you're interested in this kind of game it's really up to personal preference the smaller more portable version is nicer although i will mention that the pieces have to be removed from this when it goes back into the box they have uh, a little insert to put them all in so they're protected Whereas the original game, you could actually leave set up in the box. And as long as you didn't shake it around too much, you could transport a game that was in, in progress. Can't really do that with this. I mean, you could leave it set up in there, but you wouldn't be able to shut the lid. Again, minor thing, nothing too important. As I said, they're overall, they're both great games. And you do well to pick either one up. It is worth noting that there are some expansions to the game. The 2.0 version does have the Eye of Horus expansion, which looks very similar to a Scarab, except instead of a mirror on here, it has a prism that causes the laser, when it hits it, instead of reflecting off at 90 degrees, it hits and is split. It reflects off at 90 degrees and goes straight through, I believe. I'm not sure the exact angles they go, but it splits the beam into two, and then you have two lasers from there on. And it's a very interesting add-on. I do not have one. I need to get my hands on it. I don't have it for either game. The second expansion to the original game was the Tower of Kadesh, I think it is. And it was a big tower that stood up off the middle of the board and made it into 3D. They do not have that expansion for this version of the game. So if that's something you're interested in, look for the original version. Of the two, though, like I said, I think I prefer this one just because of its compact size. It's easier to transport. It's easier to uh, bring to a game night or bring to a friend's house. And um, the pieces do look a little bit more detailed and are a little bit more attention grabbing when people see it on the table. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for our look at Ket 2.0. If it looks like something you'd be interested in, check it out. I'm also doing a video on the newest version of it, which is a more modern take with a sci-fi theme. It is actually almost identical to Cat 2.0 here, except it has a sci-fi theme instead of an Egyptian theme. That one's called Laser Chess. Stay tuned on the channel for a video about that one. Or you can check out the video for the original Cat. I'll link that at the end here. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.